welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. This is probably going to be the last paddle of the year for my skin on frame canoe that I built about four months ago. So I thought I would take the chance and go over the performance of the canoe and my final thoughts of the build itself. So if this is the kind of thing you'd like to see, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment in the comment box and ring the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Burning River Bushcraft. I also teach outdoor courses at OutdoorCore.com. So if you didn't see any of the videos yet, I'll put a link in the description. There's about 10 of them in total. And this took several months to build on and off. I didn't work at it steady. I believe uh, the website Geodesic Airlight says it takes around 60 hours. But a lot of that's dry time as well. So you can't just take a week's vacation, work on it 60 hours, and end up one of these. It doesn't quite work out that way. But overall it's it's been a heck of a canoe i really like it i really like the process and i kind of suggest you'd make one yourself so this particular canoe is from geodesic Aerolite. this is a nimrod model 12 foot skin on frame and as i mentioned earlier this one's 13 feet so i talked to the owner larry great guy he helped me out throughout the entire build and he suggested for what i wanted to use this for i should stretch it out to around 13 feet so because i did that some of my measurements were a little bit off and it was a little bit harder to build. I would suggest if you build one, uh, they make a 14 foot model as well as a 12 foot model, kind of depending on what you want. You're better off building one that follows the prints and kit that they make exactly. Now, as far as kit, all this lumber is from Home Depot. So this is all kiln drying lumber. This was the only skin on frame kit I found that did not require some kind of special green lumber green meaning uh, fresh so this is all dried lumber I rehydrated it I bent all the ribs it came with the epoxy it came with prints and then it came with the skin as well so here you can kind of see the skin so this is a Dacron and it actually you heat it up and it shrinks down and then you can see my lines in here this is a Kevlar weave so what that Kevlar does is it kind of gives it a cross section in between these squares of my ribs and my stringers so there's nothing supporting that section so that's what the Kevlar line does so total weight on this is around 15 pounds and that's with me standing on a scale putting the canoe on my shoulders and stepping back on a regular bathroom scale so 15 pounds is pretty nice it's incredibly light you just can't believe how light this thing is and it's a pretty fast paddle it's weird getting in and out of it because it's so light it's not sink down into the water so it's kind of sitting on top of the water a normal my normal canoe is like 60 pounds so that 60 pound canoe is already set down into the water a little bit with this thing it's just floating on top like a leaf until you get your body weight down in it but once you're in the boat it's really really secure enough talking let's see how this thing works on the water so building the skin on frame it was a lot of work i'm not gonna lie to you it was very, very time consuming. The only thing that was really hard was the Dacron was kind of hard to mess with. And that's just because I've got more experience woodworking and doing other thing like that than, than messing with the Dacron. It wasn't necessarily hard, but it required a little bit of touch. So the thing that worried me most on this was actually bending the ribs. And... It was really no big deal. It was kind of anticlimactic, actually. I don't think I had any breaks, and I didn't uh, I didn't do any pictures or any videos until I had the ribs built because I didn't want to have a complete, total failure and not be able to finish this project. So I didn't release anything until I at least had the ribs built, and it was really anticlimactic. Layout was pretty simple. Um, I don't have a table saw. I don't have a planer. If you have any of that available. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier and a lot faster. But it's just like any other project. You just cut it up into, into steps. So all the steps take time. And because this was a... 13 foot canoe that was kind of a one-off it was a little bit more difficult like I mentioned I would definitely make a 12 or a a 14 for next time 
and I suggest your first boat be something that's a little more standard. Got some wood ducks flying up over here. So this that's awesome. So this is a stealthy boat. Uh, I really like it. It's it's so nice on the water that I forget how much work it was to build, and it wasn't hard. Like I said, I I want to stress that it's not it's not just an intense labor, hard all the time job. It's just time consuming. When you're bending ribs, you're bending ribs for all day. I think it did it in two days because it took so long. Um, the fabric just takes time uh, and you want to do a good job with it so I didn't want to just kind of throw it together and call it good. I was trying to do the best possible job I could with it. But this is a 13 foot pack boat and the boats I was looking at that were similar were crazy expensive. I mean you're talking $1,200 to $3,000 for a boat that's this approximate size and even close to this weight you're not going to get this weight with anything else any materials other than this but of course you've got to talk about durability with this this is such thin wood you i'm almost afraid to strap it to the top of the the roof i'm very very careful anytime i do anything with it and part of that is because the amount of labor that went into this is still fresh in my head but really, I'm not making a showpiece. I'm if I can't um, have this be a usable boat for me, there's really no point in having one. So having said all that, uh, you're going to hit logs and just obstructions. There's all kinds of floating logs around here. And I was in shallow water back there. It's fairly deep out in the middle of this lake. So submerged stuff happens. That's just part of canoeing. And I'm pretty confident about a bump with this. I've hit floating logs and never anything real solid yet. And I've got a wear plate on the front and back, which is just a thin piece of tulip poplar. Or, I'm sorry, that's red oak, so that's a tough one, tougher wood. But I would be very, very leery about taking it on any type of river trip, especially in this area. My plastic kayaks, or my roto-molded kayaks, are they're pretty scratched up. My, uh, my bigger canoe, as well, I've got that thing pinned in a in a strainer and almost bent it in half and if I did that with this boat I would just have toothpicks there's you can't even lie to yourself and pretend that it's going to be that durable and hold up to something like that but having said that people a lot better than me did a lot wilder things in old canvas boats so there's nothing for free you can work save money and go buy a lightweight solo like this for a couple thousand bucks or you can get the prints and do it yourself and it's going to take you quite a while probably 60 to 80 hours is a pretty good approximate on your first one i'm very very confident i could get this down and uh, save myself a lot of time on the next couple builds and the more i get out here the more i'm thinking i'm going to do this and make more of these this is fun it was fun to build and it's super fun to paddle and there's really really no other options i do not like lugging big heavy canoes up on top of a rack onto my jeep So I view this lightweight skin on frame canoe as just another way to get out there and this eliminates the excuse of I don't feel like hauling my canoe out and well it's it's just too much of a pain to drag it down to the water. 
get yourself one of these and get outside more. Till next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.